when you're dealing with the Holy Scriptures. A lot of people miss that, but that's an example of something that we see in um, in Matthew. And you know, you, I don't know how many of you guys know about this stuff. I mean, people who have wanted to deny the virgin birth, which is actually a very reasonable thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, after all, when was the last time you saw a virgin get pregnant and no man involved? It doesn't happen in our daily lives. It, it hasn't happened in anybody's daily life, say what? <laughs> you know, so this was an extreme exception. Uh, so, you know, naturally people who want to um, uh, not take the scriptures seriously, make it more reasonable. Uh, maybe they're feeling intimidated by their peers, so they don't want to believe in fairy tales. Well, they look at the Hebrew there, and they see that the word there is Alma, which can be also be translated as maiden. So it can be a virgin, as a woman who's not had sex. It can also mean maiden, just an unmarried woman. So, you know, who are we talking about here? And, you know, maybe we should read this the other way type of thing. The problem is, what Matthew is quoting is not the Old Testament Hebrew. He's quoting the Greek Septuagint. And in the Septuagint, the words that are translated there in Isaiah 7, 14, Alma is translated as Parthenos. You've heard of the Parthenon, right? What do you got outside the Parthenon? All kinds of ladies, you know, columns carved like ladies. Parthenos means virgin, like virgin virgin, like no be with other you know, man or whatever virgin. So when that passage was translated into Greek about 550 years after it had been written in Hebrew, the Jewish scholars at the time chose to use Parthenos. They could have used Gune, you know, or Gunike, that's what I call my wife, Gunike, it's a diminutive. You know, it means it's like Spanish, mujer, me mujer, you know, my woman, you know, type of thing. But Gune would be a wife or a woman or a dear person or all that. Yeah, you'd be surprised all the crazy, you know. It's not a, hey honey, hey babe, hey sugar, hey beautiful wife, you know, I gotta come up with all these other things and butcher other languages, and then I start talking to her in Spanish, and then it gets really bad from there. Um, the Spanish, that is. But be that as it may, you know, that's, they chose Parthenos 150 years before Jesus' birth to translate Alma. So what were these people thinking? Obviously, they were thinking virgin birth and not just some chicken in Isaiah, or Ahaz's court. So there was a little bit of a thing there. And, you know, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, actually had an whole entire doctrinal war and split the Synod over this. I mean, it's crazy because some people wanted to deny such supernatural truths of Holy Scripture. Well, you can't do that and still be a Christian, in my opinion, because if you deny Jesus' as virgin birth, what have you got? You know, you, you've got some guy, he must have been very nice. I mean, he obviously had a huge impact on the world. You have a life of Brian. You have a life of Brian type thing. Always look on the bright side <laughs> of life. I can't whistle. Okay, so you and I are the only ones who've seen that movie. Okay, there we go. Oh, you guys have seen it too. Nobody wants to admit it. Oh, man, I've been watching Monty Python. I better not admit that in Bible class. <laughs> so how many of you know about the uh, the airspeed of a, of a swallow carrying a coconut? Okay, we won't ask that question anymore. That's another Monty Python. What about the knights who say me? The knights who say me? i got to look that one up. <laughs> I remember it, but only vaguely. So i got to look that one up. Okay. Anyways, that's me shooting from the cuff this morning. What else do we want to do?